You're listening to Pushing the Envelope, Life at the Cutting Edge of Customs Innovation. I'm Tom Muller with the Cross-Border Research Association. On this show, we explore the frontiers of customs creativity in conversations with customs and logistics experts, technology innovators, research scientists, and other leaders in the field. Industry insiders call this show the PenCast because it's part of PenCP, a network for boosting customs innovation funded by the European Union under the Horizon 2020 program. Today, I'm very honored to be speaking with Dr. Kunio Mikuria, longtime Secretary General of the World Customs Organization, who concluded his distinguished career at the WCO just a few weeks ago. Hello, Dr. Mikuria, and welcome to Pushing the Envelope. Hello. Thank you very much, Tom. And it is a pleasure and honor for me to speak with you. Thank you. Uh, to start off with, could you give our listeners a word on your background and what brought you to the field of customs work and eventually to the head of the WCO? Well, um, uh, in my younger days, I worked in the Ministry of Finance in Japan. And uh, as uh, um, customs is attached to Ministry of Finance, so it is uh, um, well, one of the area. But uh, in 1990, I was uh, sent to Geneva to represent the Ministry of Finance at the then on um, round negotiation um, at the then GATT General Agreement on Tariff and Trade. And, uh, um, well, prior to that, I was uh, um, totally in the domestic field of, uh, um, well, finance, uh, um, well, uh, banking policy and uh, f- fiscal policy. So it was uh, really, uh, well, a uh, first time that I saw trade and, uh, um, well, customs. And uh, as at that time, uh, um, as the GATT shows, uh, tariff and the customer uh, was an important area. So I was a tariff negotiator and, uh, well, the round negotiation at, was, uh, um, well, uh, was started much earlier, uh, but, uh, um, uh, it was ended in 1994. And, uh, um, by that time, uh, at the end of 1990, well, 1993, um, in June, I went back to Japan, but I became, uh, um, well, uh, Tokyo based uh, tariff negotiator. And, uh, um, and then, um, I knew, uh, how the GATT functions and then supported the establishment of the World Trade Organization. Uh, therefore, I was deemed as, uh, um, specialist expert in the area of trade negotiation. And so, uh, uh, I finished uh, my job, uh, um, as tariff negotiator and then I went to the Diet or Japanese Parliament to pass the package of Ur- the outcome of the Uruguay negotiation. And then I went back to the, well, domestic area. Uh, it's uh, about, uh, uh, well, uh, budgetary uh, supervisor for, uh, well, industry and, uh, um, uh, diplomatic and, uh, um, also, um, official aid policy. So that was helpful, um, uh, later. And then I was called back to, um, customs because they wanted to, well, reform customs more in tune with the uh, risk management and uh, innovation, but also, um, well, international dimension has become very important. Uh, therefore, um, I worked uh, there, um, uh, from 1997 and, uh, um, for that, I went to the WCO to see how other customer administrations were functioning in the area of, uh, um, compliance and enforcement. And I learned a lot and uh, I implemented the new policy in Japan customs. And, uh, um, also, um, as my background was uh, fiscal finance, uh, um, I also became uh, um, a Japanese representative to WCO's finance committee. Hmm. And uh, um, uh, then uh, they uh, asked me to become the chairperson of finance committee, and uh, which was honor, but uh, um, uh, that was really incorporated uh, formally in the WCO. And at the same time, in 1999, um, WCO's uh, Digital Intelligence Liaison Office, or RIDO, 
uh, in the Asia Pacific moved from Hong Kong to Tokyo. And as I was supervisor uh, of that enforcement and the intelligence area, uh, I supervised the Tokyo Rilo's um, movement. So um, uh, on the international front for the Rilo and um, well, uh, WCO's finance committee, I was uh, um, deeply involved. And uh, in 2000, uh, and the then Secretary General of WCO asked me to join the WCO, uh, because I was, uh, um, well, ex- I had, uh, I had expertise, uh, not only in customs, but trade negotiation and finance. Mm-hmm. So 2001, I joined, um, uh, well, uh, there was an election, uh, and I was elected as deputy secretary general, uh, of the WCO. And then, uh, well, um, as you know, I, I started my career, uh, in the WCO 2002 and uh, then, uh, 2008, uh, there was, uh, well, election for secretary general and, uh, well, um, I was elected on the basis of what I have achieved, uh, as a sec- deputy secretary general. So how, this is uh, how I joined the WCO and became a secretary general. This is fascinating. And, and yeah, your expertise that you bring, um, and not only in finance and banking, but also, uh, fiscal policy and trade negotiations made, made it a, a very, very good package for you to, to join, uh, to join the WCO. Um, cu- culturally, uh, your home country, Japan, obviously an island nation, an industrial and commercial powerhouse, a global trading hub. As as a Japanese citizen, what traditions, history, and unique perspectives do you think you brought to your customs work? Well, um, it's an interesting question because um, uh, this is an island uh, um, country, so it's more on the seaport, maritime, and uh, air transport uh, that uh, Japan was specialized. And uh, perhaps these are the easier area for uh, introducing IT technology, um, well, computerization uh, compared to uh, land borders. So um, in 1970s, Japan has already started that uh, um, well, computerization of custom procedures. So in that sense, Japan is um, was well advanced uh, uh, in using technology. But also, um, uh, well, um, uh, another uh, thing that I was able to bring was the well, integrity, because, um, well, uh, in terms of, uh, um, well, anti-corruption, uh, Japan has a strong uh, culture of integrity. And uh, um, uh, so that was uh, um, another good uh, uh, area. And also, um, at that time, Japan has been a big donor, uh, one of the biggest donors uh, for uh, the world economy, uh, for developing countries. And uh, as I was a supervisor, a budgetary supervisor for that uh, aid policy, um, um, I think I was able to bring that, uh, well, um, capacity building, how to implement uh, 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 on the ground. So um, these are the areas uh, that uh, um, I was able to bring. And uh, also in Japan, um, customs is not only, um, well, revenue collection, uh, because um, as a developed country, um, well, the share of revenue was not that high, but uh, still, of course, still important, but uh, more on... Well, facilitation and the compliance, the facilitation to support uh, more trade and uh, compliance to protect uh, um, citizens in the island. That were uh, the major uh, function. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, uh, I think this was beneficial for me to um, bring to WCO for uh, its contribution. Just as a side note, why is it um, easier to implement new technology in sea and air borders than it is in land borders? Um, because um, the trade volume, um, as you know, um, um, well, vessel um, 
Well, uh, 90, early 1970s, uh, there was a comp- uh, containerization. Mm-hmm. Um, I often call that, uh, um, uh, later, later 20th century. It's the era of containerization. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, why globalization occurred? Because of the containerization, which started after the, uh, well, 1960s, 70s, and also, um, IT technology, uh, because in that way, communication has become easier. So, mm-hmm. uh, the, in terms of logistics, uh, at that time, um, just in time uh, was uh, really Japan's strong part. So, um, as industry, uh, therefore, customers should uh, uh, well adapt it to uh, should adapt to that uh, um, really fast clearance, but also uh, protecting well um, compliance. That means use of technology, IT, and, um, well, uh, um, containerization. Whereas uh, land borders, it's, yes, there are containers, but uh, not a small quantity by trucks, uh, not a huge container ship. And uh, the same applies to the, well, uh, air cargo. So I think uh, that is why, um, in a way, um, well, Japan was uh, um, able to implement, to focus, uh, concentrate its technological advancement to maritime and air transport. Understood. Understood. That's excellent. Um, you, you mentioned the delicate balance between facilitation, in other words, making more trade happen, and compliance, protecting citizens from, from well, wrongdoing, dangerous materials, and so on. And that obviously requires customs administrations on the one hand, but also corporations and even national governments all to cooperate, to collaborate openly and transparently. And and that's an incredible challenge to make that happen, isn't it? What, what are the challenges that you ran into in getting all of these different parties to trust each other and to collaborate? And what are, what are some of the cases in which they refuse to do so? Um, uh, my experience is based on national experience in Japan. Right. And right. Uh, um, for facilitation, I talked about uh, the early use of information technology. But uh, um, in the compliance, um, uh, facilitation compliance, you said balance, but we call it more integration of um, trade facilitation and trade compliance uh, into one um, procedure. And risk management is the key. And also compliance of traders is another key. Therefore, um, how to uh, nurture compliance culture in, in the trading sector, uh, private sector is important. And uh, unfortunately, um, well, uh, there was um, a kind of trust between uh, well, the private sector and the public sector uh, at that time. And uh, also, um, uh, you talked about other government agencies. And, uh, um, uh, with, uh, um, well, Japan has implemented, uh, um, single window approach at a very early stage. And, uh, um, uh, as, uh, um, uh, usually customs, not only Japan, but uh, globally custom is uh, most advanced, uh, in, um, introducing uh, information technology. Therefore, um, uh, Japan's case was, uh, um, well, um, extending its uh, computer system to other government agencies and offer them the, well, uh, service to them. Of course, at the outset, uh, um, it was not that easy. And uh, um, uh, because um, other government agencies, I'm talking about more on regulatory agencies, transport and trade and uh, um, health, uh, etc. cetera, uh, they are suspicious that uh, by well, um, accepting a customs uh, extension, uh, IT of IT system might, uh, um, well, um, affect uh, their, uh, capability of doing their own, um, computerization. But, uh, um, we said that, uh, no, no, you can, you, you can develop your own system, but, uh, um, we'll do interface. So that, uh, um, uh, your uh, purpose of uh, facilitating legitimate trade will be, um, nearly honored, but at the same time, 
detecting uh, um, uh, illicit trade or um, suspicious one or irregular one that uh, they uh, could, uh, uh, well, uh, really um, benefit. So this is on the regulatory agency ministry side, and another is law enforcement agencies, police, etc. And, uh, um, uh, well, customs and police are, well, in general, in many countries, they are, well, um, there is a cooperation, but also uh, tension or uh, competition, uh, because whenever there are seizures and uh, also um uh, also um well um arrest uh, it is important who get the credit is yeah. it customs or police mm. so um what i have done uh, uh, as uh, head of enforcement was to visit as many local um well, prefectural um uh, uh, well police heads and try to um well, nurture, um, trust. So, uh, this is how I, well, um, tried to, um, get them, um, on our side. Uh, mm-hmm. so, and this is all, of course, this is an ongoing process. And, uh, um, uh, well, I talked about my, the case in Japan, but when I uh, visit other countries, I always observe the same challenges. So this is rather universal. And uh, this is why I try to get uh, um, better cooperation with, for example, Interpol, uh, the police, and uh, International Maritime Organization um, or International Civil Aviation Organization, that transport area, and the trade area, of course, WTO, but uh, um, other well, uh, UN's related agencies, um, well, WHO and others, uh, we try to, um, get, uh, um, uh, coordination and cooperation with those international organizations to encourage, um, our members, um, uh, customers and, uh, their, um, well, clients or, uh, their partners more dialogue and cooperation. Uh, yeah, nurturing trust and overcoming suspicions is a recurrent theme, isn't it? When, when you go from one, from private to public sector and from, from different agencies, as you say. So having, having you be a, a sort of a, a diplomat of cooperation and coordination and nurturing trust is, is, is an invaluable one. And, and we, we need more of those, those diplomats who bridge, build bridges rather than walls. Yeah. Um, speaking of bridges uh, and walls, um, I, the, another theme of PenCP is to try to um, um, bridge the gap between public and private spheres in uh, technology development. In other words, finding ways to um, reach researchers in academia or in tech startups and have them work on um, the biggest customs innova- um, innovations and the biggest challenges to customs. Um, do you have tips for how to encourage cooperation and coordination between customs administrations on the one hand and um, research in academia or uh, startups on the other? Uh, yes, sure. And uh, um, customs should be always uh, um, vigilant and uh, looking at uh, what kind of technology is available. So we constantly um, viewed, um, uh, initially we called it disruptive technology. Disruptive in the sense of disrupting, uh, well, usual business model. But uh, um, now a uh, disruptive model has emerged. So uh, we call it more on emerging technology and how uh, we uh, see the potential for customs to use those technologies. And then um, usually technologies uh, come not from customs, but uh, first the private sector use that. So we have to address that issue with the private sector um and uh, um uh, in the end uh, what uh, we need is um uh, private sectors uh, uh, cooperation um and uh, um also um how to bri- bridge 
private sector's uh, um, technology to public sector's uh, um, technology. And for that, uh, we encourage research, researchers, universities, and institutes, and also startups. One example is that uh, now um, we are we are implementing our data strategy and uh, one of uh, one pillar is that uh, that cooperative approach or collaborative approach between startups universities uh, research institute and customs how to use data and uh, um what kind of technology can help well um speaking of technology there are many um well well, disruptive or more uh, emerging technologies. So far, at first, uh, we looked at uh, um, blockchain technology and uh, um, we encouraged the members to go to private sector that the private sector, well, uh, forms its own um, uh, blockchain, but how customs can, well, um, have access to that. Because from custom point of view, what we need is data. And uh, um, because our risk management is based on data. Uh, therefore, how to get the data from a blockchain is important. And also, when we get the data, uh, well, um, of course, more recently, um, well, e-commerce, it is about uh, um, uh, for customs, how to get the data from e-commerce uh, is important because um, unlike containers, uh, well, I, I said that container was, um, the late 21st century was con the period uh, era of container, but the 21st century, uh, increasingly it is the era of, uh, well, packages, uh, or parcels and uh, smaller and smaller. And, uh, um, also those who are involved in those, um, well, small packages or parcels, they are, well, consumers or uh, small and medium size enterprise. So how to get them on board and uh, try to ensure their compliance and um, by getting data is very important. And uh, therefore in this area as well, we work with, uh, um, we, we try to use uh, um, as many technologies as possible. Uh, for example, um, when uh, small packages arrive, uh, well, usual, um, huge X-ray machine is not necessarily, well, um, arranged for that purpose. So we, uh, we work with, uh, private sector, uh, those, uh, scanning sector to come up with new solutions, but also how to use that image data for uh, risk management, risk analysis using AI. Uh, because, um, well, at one time I saw that uh, all scanning, uh, scanners and, uh, um, scanned images behind the sea, there are many, well, um, officers and experts watching at monitors, but that is not very well efficient. So rather, uh, AI, uh, by machine learning, AI understand that and, uh, uh, just, uh, um, eliminate uh, which are totally white, uh, well, no problem. Uh, low risk and uh, just, uh, um, uh, we'll focus on uh, targeting uh, um, high risk one and uh, um, bring them to well, human eyes. That is what we want. So there are many areas of, uh, um, uh, well, technological um, uh, application to the new era of, uh, um, well, customs and uh, trade flow. Hmm. Yes, I you know the, the the words AI and machine learning um, one hears those a lot and and as you say the the promise of of them in in improving the way in which customs is done speeding up and and making more accurate is incredible. Um, but there are also times when I think those those terms are kind of thrown around without a lot of rigor in uh, and roll a lot of understanding. Another buzzword I hear a lot is is blockchain. And I was wondering, do you know the recent um, trade lens, the the IBM Maersk uh, blockchain enabled global trading platform, which which didn't work out. Um, the, this, the failure of this project, um, despite major 
um, partners and despite an obvious need for, for such a platform. What can we learn from this and, and what should we do the next time around to make that such a project work? Well, um, there are several um, elements that uh, um, uh, I, we learned. Um, first, uh, uh, blockchain is um, well distributed ledger. So that means it's decentralized uh, system, whereas custom is one of the central authority. So how to make it, uh, um, well, um, uh, well, um, functional is, uh, quite often I, I discussed with many heads of customs that I urged to look at, uh, um, blockchain and they came back that, uh, mm, that is, uh, um, uh, difficult and also trust, uh, issue because, um, data should be a quality one. But um, if that data is uh, going through blockchain is not uh, a quality one, uh, that causes a problem. And uh, um, garbage in, garbage out comes. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, um, um, uh, how, um, well, obviously, um, private sector has, uh, well, um, uh, merit uh, in using blockchain. Uh, but uh, how customs can, um, well, they want to increase, um, the, well, um, benefit of, uh, um, using blockchain in logistics. How customs can support or customs have problems. That is what uh, we have to identify more. Yeah, more, um, talk uh, would be necessary. And also, um, uh, well, um, in general, blockchains, there are many blockchains and what are the harmonized data that the customer want? How they can harmonize uh, data within blockchain? That was another issue uh, that uh, occurred. And uh, uh, in a way, we are waiting that, uh, okay, once blockchain is really used and uh, um, becoming a major, the WCO can um, contribute with uh, um, standardization of data set for blockchain. But uh, as you said, it didn't occur because before that, there are so many uh, questions uh, uh, that uh, um, had a problem. And also blockchain itself um, uh, causes a problem. Um, well, um, quite often when we hear blockchain, it is about cryptocurrency. And uh, nowadays they, well, uh, mention the problem of, uh, um, well, uh, effects on environment, etc. So um, blockchain, et cetera, uh, causes, um, well, um, very, um, well, in the future, very helpful vision, but uh, um uh, well, in the short term, um, we encountered uh, uh, problems. Uh, mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, I see that uh, um, many customs are now using uh, um, underlying blockchain technology, but not blockchain itself, but uh, underlying blockchain technology to connect those um, partners. It is a useful one, so uh, uh, we can use that. But uh, um uh, customs didn't really adhere uh, fully to the proposed blockchain because of the benefit for customs and also um, uh, customs uh, uh, mission is not only facilitating but also compliance and uh, how blockchain can help uh, um, compliance part uh, was um, another question that was raised. This concludes the first part of my PENCAST conversation with Dr. Kunio Mikuria, former Secretary General of the World Customs Organization. Tune in soon for the second half of our talk. Thank you.